Starting off, we have to talk about his current relationship with his daughter, Suri Cruz, who is now 18. It's been reported that Tom hasn't seen her in a very long time and is not a part of her life. But what really happened between them and why is their relationship such a well kept secret? Well, Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes welcomed Surrey in 2006, and from all appearances, they had a solid parent child relationship up until 2012. After Tom and Katie's divorce, he completely distanced himself from Katie and Surrey and went no contact. Now, during his 2012 deposition lawsuit against Bauer Media, he revealed that his commitment to Scientology was the biggest factor in the breakup of his family. Family. When lawyers asked whether Katie had divorced him over his ties to the church, he said that was one of the assertions, yes. He also admitted that he didn't have any contact with Surrey for three months right after the divorce. Surprisingly to many, Tom was not awarded custody of Surrey at all and instead walked away from the discussions with visitation rights only. Even though the custody agreement struck between makes it clear that he can see his daughter for 10 days a month, it seems like he hasn't been able to make that happen. Now on top of that, a source close to the situation has said that it seems to be a deliberate choice he is making. Now that brings us to the truth about his divorce from Katie Holmes. Back in 2012, the former Hollywood power couple announced to the world that they were getting divorced after six years of marriage. While this was shocking, Tom eventually confirmed what everyone had suspected about him. The major reason for their split was Katie's aversion to raising Surrey as a Scientologist. In a 2013 deposition, the actor admitted that Surrey, who was just seven years old at the time, was no longer a practicing member of the church. And when it comes to their beliefs, people who leave the religion are often cut off from other practicing members. And because of Tom's position as a high ranking member, it would be practically impossible for him to keep his daughter in his life. In 2013, he spoke about the situation candidly with lawyers saying, listen, when there is a divorce, things change. It's not an ideal scene. It's not an ideal situation. He admitted that he didn't see the divorce coming at all, saying, I didn't expect it. Life is a tragic comedy. You need to have a sense of humor. But he actually bounced back pretty quickly and they reached a settlement deal after only 11 days. Next up, we have his broken family with Nicole Kidman. While Tom and Nicole were married, they adopted two children, Isabella and Connor, and when they split, Tom did his best to convince them to cut their mother out of their lives. That's the shocking allegation that Sam Domingo made in 2019, claiming that Tom made the decision to disconnect from Nicole and have his children disconnect as well, claiming that Isabella and Connor weren't given a choice about it and were totally brainwashed. So what are his grown up kids doing now? Well, in 2018, Katrina Katrina Reyes claimed that Connor was living in a church owned hotel under constant surveillance. She said they'll have him on a course and do some auditing, he can't go out and party and drink, and he'll be on vitamins and juices. As for Isabella, the underground bunker uncovered in 2019 that she starred in a promotional video encouraging members to intern as auditors at the church's London branch. She said, I became the annoying girl in the org who would just talk endlessly about how incredible training is and how phenomenal the internship is. Thank you to my dad for everything. So clearly, both of them are still close with Tom, but have completely disconnected from Nicole. Now you might be wondering, how does Hollywood really feel about Tom Cruise? Well, that brings us to our next point, as, as he was exposed for secretly trying to convert other celebrities. Devoting your life to a faith is one thing, but trying to coerce other A-list celebs into doing the same thing sounds a lot like trouble. When Seth Rogen went on Howard Stern, he talked about spending the day with Tom Cruise and director Judd Apatow. Now Seth was telling jokes and said, I think the pharmaceutical industry is making me look bad, to which Tom responded, it's like with Scientology, if you let me just tell you what it is really about, just give me like 20 minutes to really tell you what it's about, you would say no effing way, no effing way. Now Seth said that this made him feel really uncomfortable as it seemed like Tom was constantly trying to steer the conversation towards his religion at every chance he got. Luckily Judd was there at the time and said, I feel like we're good, let's just talk about movies and stuff. Now at that point, Seth told Howard that he was extremely relieved because if he was there alone with Tom, the situation may have panned out differently. Now all this makes you wonder about his behavior behind closed doors, which is what Leah Remini exposed in her memoir, Troublemaker. On one occasion, Leah claimed that Tom shouted at his assistants because he wanted to make cookies, but he couldn't find the pre-packaged cookie dough. In the book, she claimed that he said, guys, where's the cookie stuff? God damn it. Can I just get the stuff for the cookies, guys? Get in the effing present time. It's what you need to do. Now to her, Tom seemed like a child who had never been told no and that he screamed at his assistant. Now in her book, Leah 
also made some shocking allegations about several well known Hollywood celebrities. In fact, she recalled a time that she and her husband, Angelo, spent time at Tom's Beverly Hills mansion, where he invited a group of well known Scientologists and other celebrities, including Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. He announced to all guests that he wanted to play hide and seek and pressured everyone to join in. And when Top Gun Maverick came out, Leah cautioned fans about supporting him, saying that, Don't let the movie star charm fool you, and no, I will not watch the movie, nor will I ever support or approve this scam of a man. So she's clearly not one to forgive or forget. Now speaking of outbursts, did you know that Tom was also caught yelling at crew members? In December 2020, The Sun published leak audio of him yelling at his Mission Impossible 7 staffers after social distancing rules were broken on set. Tom reportedly flew into a rage after spotting two of his crew members standing within two meters of each other. He shouted, and if you don't do it, you're fired, I see you do it again, you're effing gone. No apologies. You can tell it to the people that are losing their effing homes because our industry is shut down. It's not going to put food on their table or pay for their college education. The outburst led five crew members to quit on the spot, as they just didn't feel like putting up with any more of his verbal attacks. Now, Fans and celebrities were divided in response to this news, but things got awkward when TMZ revealed that Tom himself was not even following the CDC guidelines. As it turns out, the valve mask that he was wearing on set was not effective because it allows potentially infected droplets to leave the mask. Next up, we have the Matt Lauer interview. Tom's arrogance was stifling when he got into a heated argument with Matt Lauer about prescription drugs and about the practice of psychiatry, which he called a pseudoscience. Tom's infamous 2005 interview on the Today Show was so bad that it changed the way that he was perceived, and he proceeded to tell Matt there is no such thing as having a chemical imbalance in the brain, and that the only way to cure depression was vitamins and exercise. Now, his appearance on the show came shortly after he publicly shamed Brooke. Shields for her moment of vulnerability when she announced that she used antidepressants to help her with her postpartum depression. To which Tom said, When someone says medication has helped them, it is to cope, it didn't cure anything. There is no science, there's nothing that can cure them whatsoever. He added that Brooke Shields is a very talented woman, but looking at where her career has gone. Now that last insult was so unnecessary, but it does tell you a lot about his personality. Next we have the airplane incident. During an appearance on The Late Show with David Letterman in 1999, Tom could not stop laughing as he told a story of how he restricted oxygen for a passenger when flying to Colorado. According to the actor, he and his co-pilot as well as one other passenger were using oxygen masks because they were flying at high altitudes. But Tom said he soon realized that they did not have enough oxygen to stay alert at that altitude, so he and the co-pilot decided to turn off the oxygen mask for the other passenger so that they could continue their journey and eventually the person passed out due to the lack of oxygen. At this point in the story, Tom burst out laughing while David Letterman just looked uncomfortable. He said, looking at it from another direction, isn't that attempted manslaughter? You just turned a guy's oxygen off. You're lucky you're not doing time, for the love of God. But Tom insisted that everything turned out fine and the passenger was okay, but the whole thing just made him look and sound completely psychotic. Now let's talk about the infamous couch jump. The couch jump on the Oprah Winfrey show in May 2005 is one of the most memorable moments in Tom's career. The actor was talking to Oprah about his new relationship with Katie Holmes, whom he eventually married a year later. But his excitement went a little too far as he started getting up and doing victory poses. At one point, he jumped up on the couch in the middle of the conversation right next to Oprah. His behavior was not only over the top, but extremely unprofessional and viewers immediately started sympathizing with Oprah. Because despite being a talented host with years of TV experience, the situation was clearly out of her depth. Now, eventually, Tom's off screen antics began to affect his career, as in 2006, Paramount Pictures ended its 14 year working relationship with the actor, fearing his erratic actions were going to negatively impact receipts for the upcoming Mission Impossible 3. Now, Redstone was quoted by CNN saying, Although we like him personally, we thought it was wrong to renew his deal. His recent conduct has not been accepted to Paramount. And lastly, we have the 60 Minutes interview. It might not be as disastrous as his interview with Matt Lahr, but Tom's appearance on 60 Minutes Australia makes for a tense and uncomfortable viewing nonetheless. In June 2005, he was interviewed by journalist Peter Overton to talk about his Scientology beliefs and Hollywood stardom. Now, During the interview, he asked a series of questions about his ex-wife Nicole Kidman, and the pair divorced in 2001, have two children which have become estranged from Nicole after their divorce. Now, eventually, Tom felt 
felt that the questions had gone too far and chastised Peter for asking them. He said, you're stepping over the line now. You're stepping over the line. You know you are. When Overton said that he was asking questions that the public wanted to know, Cruz replied, Peter, you want to know. Take responsibility for what you want to know. Don't say other people. This is a conversation that I'm having with you, right? I'm just telling you right now, okay? Just put your manners back in. Now, Peter apologized so the interview could continue, but years later in 2020, he said that he didn't regret asking the question. Known for his intense acting style and often dangerous stunts, Cruz is undoubtedly an icon in the industry. However, not everyone in Hollywood is eager to share the screen with him. Stick around as we reveal the surprising names on this list and uncover the reasons behind their decisions. Starting off with Mark Wahlberg, according to TMZ, confidential court documents suggest that Tom Cruise's lawyers compared his film work and the resulting absence from his daughter Suri to the struggles experienced by soldiers stationed in Afghanistan. Despite this, Cruz denied any reference to Afghanistan, though he did admit to feeling a sense of similarity in one of his roles. In a different scenario, Mark Wahlberg voiced his dislike for actors comparing their career challenges to real-life warfare during a Q&A session. However, he didn't name Cruz directly. He only shaded him. It's clear there's a disconnect here and Mark Wahlberg appears to stand on the side of those who believe that acting, no matter how demanding, should not be equated to the sacrifices made by military personnel. And this is probably why Wahlberg doesn't appear to have a high opinion of Cruz's stance. On to Brad Pitt. In the iconic movie Interview with the Vampire, the characters Lestat and Louis, played by Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, experience quite a bit of tension. Interestingly, this on-screen friction seemed to mirror the actor's real life dynamics. Brad Pitt, in a candid confession reported by Radar Online, admitted to a challenging period during the production saying there was a point in the filming when I started to really resent him. It was like he was the North Pole and I was the South. In the movie Interview with the Vampire, Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise play two vampires who have lived for centuries. Their personalities and beliefs clash as they struggle with their immortal identities. However, what viewers may not have realized is that this tension was not just a part of the plot line, but also reflected the real life dynamics between the two actors during during filming. Brad Pitt's resentment towards Tom Cruise during the filming of Interview with the Vampire was as complex and layered as their on-screen characters. In the same interview with Radar Online, Pitt revealed that the disparity in their levels of stardom at that time created an unbalanced dynamic. Cruise, having more experience and influence, held more power over the film's direction, which led to Pitt feeling sidelined. Pitt found Cruise's intense approach and commitment to the character of Lestat intimidating and overwhelming, leading to a strained working environment. Pitt he also reportedly disgruntled about spending most of his time in cumbersome makeup and prosthetics, a process which Cruz was not subjected to as much. This combination of professional imbalance and personal discomfort led to the challenging period Pitt described. Anyway, on to Justin Bieber. On the 9th of June, 2019, the world of social media was set on fire with a surprise challenge from none other than the pop icon, JB. He shocked fans and followers alike by throwing down the gauntlet to Tom Cruise, hoping to face off against him in an octagon bout. However, he later admitted to TMZ with a touch of humor, I think he would probably whip my fight. He's got that dad strength. Bieber confessed that his tweet was a spur of the moment thing and as far as Cruz's response to the challenge, total radio silence. This is not the first time that a celebrity has challenged another to a fight, but it definitely caught people's attention. <laughs> Sorry, that was gross. The idea of two Hollywood stars going head to head in a physical match was both intriguing and entertaining. Fans and media outlets alike started speculating about the potential outcome of such an unlikely event. But why would Justin Bieber even think of challenging Tom Cruise? Some say it was simply a publicity stunt to promote his new album, while others speculated that there may have been some underlying tension between the two stars. Whatever the reason may be, the challenge definitely created a buzz and got people talking. The drama isn't fueled by movie roles or fame, but a race to reach the top tier in their shared church. Travolta, it seems, is not too happy. Why, you ask? Well, he perceives a bias towards Cruz from David Miscavige, the church's leader. This perceived favoritism has sown the seeds for a rather unexpected feud. The feud between John Travolta and Tom Cruise is one that has been brewing for quite some time now. While both actors have had successful careers, their rivalry seems to stem from something rather unexpected, their shared involvement in the Church of Scientology. For those who are not familiar with Scientology, it is a controversial religious organization founded by L. Ron Hubbard in the mid-20th century. It's known for its belief in reincarnation, self-improvement practices, 
and its strict hierarchical structure. Both Travolta and Cruz have been vocal about their dedication to the Church of Scientology and credit it with helping them overcome personal struggles. However, it seems that their devotion to the church has created a rift. According to sources close to Travolta, he feels Cruz is receiving special treatment within the church, which has led to Travolta feeling resentful towards his fellow actor and a sense of competition between them. Next up, the captivating revelations made by Leah Remini in her memoir, Troublemaker, Surviving Hollywood and Scientology. One fascinating detail hints at a potential dislike from Cruz towards both Ali and John Travolta, though the, ex though the exact reasons are left unexplained. Tom Cruise's dedication to Scientology has been met with both praise and condemnation. Regardless of personal beliefs, it is clear that for celebrities, the choice, the choice to openly endorse a controversial religion can have significant consequences. From an outsider's perspective, Cruz is often seen as the face of Scientology, a position that brings both respect and scrutiny. Yet Ramini's experiences with Cruz were far from positive. According to Ramini, there was an aura of untouchability surrounding Cruz within the church. She felt that he was treated differently, almost deified, leading to a culture of of preferential treatment that she strongly disagreed with. Ramini states that Cruz's behavior and actions often seem to contradict the teachings and core values of Scientology. This perceived hypocrisy along with the church's apparent unwillingness to address it was a major factor in Ramini's growing disillusionment with Scientology and her strained relationship with Cruz. In 2006, Cruz stirred the pot when he openly berated Brooke Shields for her use of antidepressants to manage postpartum depression. The star's convictions stemmed from his adherence to Scientology, belief system that renounces psychiatric treatment and the usage of drugs like antidepressants. Even though he eventually apologized to Shields, his team affirmed that his viewpoint on the matter remained unchanged. However, it's not just Cruz's stance on psychiatry that has riled Brooke Shields. The actress also took issue with the way he handled their feud publicly. In her memoir, There Was a Little Girl, The Real Story of My Mother and Me, Shields reveals her side of the story. She was deeply hurt by Cruz's judgment, especially because he had no personal experience with postpartum depression. She felt that Cruz's comments were irresponsible and showed a lack of understanding about the complexities of mental health. Despite Cruz later apologizing, it appeared the damage was already done. Matt Lauer, in an episode of the Today Show back in 2005, the celebrity guest found himself in a rather heated dialogue with the host, Matt Lauer. The conversation, which was focused on the artist's relationships with those outside the Scientology community and brought up past disagreements with Shields, left the artist visibly irked. This was particularly evident when the discussion veered towards his dead fiance, Katie Holmes. In response to Lauer's questions, the artist became defensive and began expressing his beliefs and practices within the Scientology community. The tension between the two continued to escalate as they debated over the validity of these beliefs. It was clear that Cruz was passionate about his religion and did not appreciate being questioned or challenged by someone who did not share his views. This led to a larger discussion about the controversial beliefs and practices of Scientology, including its intense scrutiny and control over its members. Kate Semerano, let's journey back to 2009 when rumors were flying high around the Australian singer Kate Semerano. The buzz was all about her possible encounter with Tom Cruise and his then wife Katie Holmes during their visit to Australia. Just like Cruz, Severano is also a follower of Scientology, but according to the Sydney Morning Herald, she put these rumors to rest, asserting that, they, that just because they share the same faith, Despite the common link of Scientology, Kate has further distanced herself from Tom, citing differences in personalities and principles as the main reasons. An outspoken critic of celebrity culture, Saberano has expressed discomfort with the way Cruz handles his faith and fame. She strongly believes that one's religious beliefs should be personal and not used as a publicity tool. This perceived exploitation of faith for public image, a tactic she believes Cruz often falls back on, is what largely contributes to her ambivalence towards him. Kirstie Alley, it's well known Known that Tom Cruise is one of Scientology's most famous high-ranking members. Within Leah Remini's memoir, Troublemaker, Surviving Hollywood and Scientology, Remini revealed that Cruise wielded a ton of power and even gave his subordinates a lesson on the power structure within the church. However, Ramini was extra troubled after attending his wedding to his now ex-wife, Kate Holmes, when Holmes had her written up for supposedly disturbing the guests with her behavior. 
Given Cruz's influence and Kirstie Alley's dedication to refuting many of Leah Romini's claims, it wouldn't be normal to assume that Alley was in Cruz's good graces. However, Alley and Cruz's relationship is more layered. Per Romini's book, Cruz wasn't fond of Alley. I had heard that Tom didn't like Kirstie Alley and John Travolta wrote Romini. If Romini's claims are true, however, then Cruz's dislike of Alley has remained private as he's never publicly derided her. And finally, Victoria Beckham. Once upon a time, our favorite power couples, Victoria and David Beckham and Tom Cruise with Katie Holmes, were frequently seen together making headlines. However, when Katie and Tom's marriage hit the rocks, whispers of a rift between Cruise and Posh Spice started to circulate. But guess what? At the celebrated Vogue 100 event, it seemed all as well between Victoria and Cruise, hinting that their friendship might have been stronger than the rumor mill. These captivating tales unveiled the intriguing, complicated, and often mysterious world of celebrity friendships, reminding us that things aren't always as they seem, especially when public figures are involved. While no concrete reason has ever been publicly disclosed by Victoria Beckham regarding any animosity towards Tom Cruise has arisen from various sources. Some claim that their differing views on Scientology, a religion Cruise is famously known for practicing, may have caused a divide. Others believe it was a strain from the public fallout of Cruise's marriage with Katie Holmes that tainted their friendship. It's crucial to note that these are merely speculations, and the actual reasons, if any, are known only to the individuals involved. It's not uncommon for celebrity friendships to go through ups and downs just like any other human relationship. The intensity of scrutiny that they face in the public eye can add an extra layer of complexity to maintaining their bond. However, when these friendships do manage to withstand the test of time and circumstances, it only adds to their allure and makes us believe in true friendship among the rich and famous. Number 10. She was pressured into marriage. While Nicole was excited to be married at first, nowadays she realizes the particularly pressure-filled situation that she was actually in. At the tender age of 23, Nicole Kidman tied the knot with Tom Cruise, who was then 28. Per Entertainment Weekly, they celebrated their nuptials in a cozy little ceremony under the Colorado sun. By today's standards, 23 certainly seems a little bit young to settle down, but love is love so just let them do what they're going to do. Kidman has gone on record claiming that the situation was a whirlwind of emotions. She was thrust into the world of stardom and fame alongside her already established husband, Tom Cruise. She also mentions that throughout their first year together, Tom was a very different man. He was attentive and almost sweet, but things eventually grew sour and after 11 years, Kidman woke up and realized what was going on. On. Number 9. The Wedding Band One of the kids that these two share, Connor Cruz, was set to be married a few years back and was really hoping that his mama Nikki would be in attendance. However, an insider spilled the juices of Connor Cruz's wedding and said that Top Gun Maverick star Tom Cruise banned Kidman from ever entering the event. As per the reports, the endless love actor didn't want Nicole Kidman to attend his son's wedding as she is considered to be suppressive by the Church of Science, let's say. And also, Cruz just doesn't want any association with her in general. Ever since their separation, it's almost as if Tom has just like wiped Kidman from his memory. He ignores her at every possible moment. These two have not spoken in over 20 years despite sharing a troubled past and, you know, Children, which is famously great for development, you know, just ignoring your kids. Kidman has never actually gone public on the specific reason that Tom avoids her like the plague, but sure, people avoid their exes all the time. But these guys have such a long history together. The idea that there seems to be some specific reason or something more behind the cold shoulder is a mystery only Nicole can solve. Number eight. He's a bad dad. Cruz has three children, Isabella and Connor, who were adopted during his marriage to Nicole, and Suri, who he fathered with Katie Holmes before their split. The first sign of Tom Cruise being a bad dad came in 2015 when he missed his eldest daughter's wedding, despite her being heavily involved in the church, going so far as to have a science-themed wedding. While Bella does keep contact with her father, the same cannot be said for Tom's other kids. According to a June 2016 report from In Touch, Cruz hasn't had contact with Surrey in years. According to insiders, this is simply due to his wanting to distance himself from his ex, Katie, and by association, his daughter. But it's not just Katie's kids that Tom has trouble with. Nicole's kids, Isabella and Connor, were adopted into the family unit and raised as their own. But when Nicole split from Tom, the relationship with them became very difficult. Their father was with a new woman, and soon after, that woman had a child, and then they had a new sibling. So up until they were adults, Tom rarely spoke to his kids 
leaving Nicole to be the single mom, which apparently she did a stellar job at as her kids have had nothing but nice things to say about this woman. Number 7. She was wired by Tom now, while Nicole has never actually confirmed that this is in fact the truth, a documentary centering around his scientific beliefs released info on science and Hollywood, claiming that Tom had wiretapped Nicole Kidman's phone. According to former members of the church, Kidman was a target due to her father being a psychologist, something that they didn't believe was a real profession, making him an enemy in their eyes. During his marriage to Nicole, he actually started distancing himself from the group and their activities, particularly when he was filming Eyes Wide Shut in England. In an effort to bring Cruz back into the fold, the church made the effort to undermine his relationship and, at Cruz's request, allegedly hired a private investigator to tap Kidman's phone. The church also worked to turn the couple's son and daughter against Kidman, convincing them that she was a suppressive person. That of course did not work, in fact the opposite effect happened, her kids got closer to her and she started to realize how freaking insane Tom is. Now, Kidman has never actually confirmed if this is real or not, but if Tom Cruise wired tapped your phone, would you go around telling people about it? Yes, that is a great story. Number 6. Won't talk about Eyes Wide Shut Eyes Wide Shut was the first collaboration between the couple, which was a dramatic thriller from 1999. Tom plays a Manhattan doctor who embarks on a bizarre night-long odyssey after his wife's admission of unfulfilled longing. The film itself received pretty solid reviews, but the actual shoot was anything but solid. So liquid then. Stanley Kubrick directed this flick, the man behind the live action adaptation of The Shining by Stephen King. Kubrick had some pretty odd requests for his actors though during their time on set. Kidman has opened up over the years about her struggles. Kubrick made it so that Nicole and Tom could not be with each other after shooting, to help maintain the air of psychological and physical alienation. This move was made as a creative effort, but many speculate that Kidman actually may have spoken to Kubrick to request this stipulation. According to the writer of the shoot, Tom was not very nice to Nicole, but we'll get into that one in a minute. The most shocking of rules was that Kubrick wanted to film all of Nicole's love making scenes in a six day span. Her partner in these scenes of course was not Tom Cruise, in fact it was a man acting as her fantasy character in the flick. Kidman has mentioned that Tom was not only forbidden from attending those six days, but that he was absolutely fuming from the situation. I'm not sure why it would have been better for him to be there, but I don't know what goes on through Tom's head. Number 5. He's a control freak Tom is no stranger to an on-set freakout or two, but he's also made a name for himself as a bit of a control freak. Both on set and in his personal relationships, Tom feels the need to be in charge of every little thing at any given moment. An insider told Radar Online that Tom was not good at keeping a relationship, as many women found him to be too intense. To him, any partner is an extension of himself and his brand. So he's not only intense, but he's a micromanager as well. So much so that at times, Cruz has even been known to control what his partners are allowed to wear when they're in public. This made many love interests feel like members of his staff, and rightfully so. Kidman recounts Tom being a strict, almost warden-like figure in her life, controlling every little aspect of what she did and said. This created a very toxic relationship between these two, which was a big part of why they split up in 2001. Number 4. He attempts to get her on his side Now, Devoting one's life to a faith created by a science fiction writer is all well and good, but trying to talk your fellow celebrities into doing the same thing, that's pretty annoying. Especially when you're married to one. I'm sure someone out there is still trying to get signatures for their Church of Lovecraft petition. It's in the link below. Sign it, please. I want it. Nicole told the Daily Mail that Cruz had an unhealthy obsession with soccer superstar David Beckham and viewed him as the ideal candidate for conversion. Sadly for Tom, that never actually happened. But it wasn't for a lack of trying, though. According to Nicole, in an attempt to lure David into the Science World headquarters, Cruz ordered C Org, which is the short form for science science folk organization members to create a full size soccer stadium. That's right, he built a stadium like the old nerdy guy and bench warmers and guess what, Beckham did not come. He said he would come and check it out, but Dave and his wife ditched the event and chose to ghost protocol his butt. And of course this decision was made after he tried to get Nicole involved several times, but remember she's a difficult person according to the church. Number 3. Bad Husband Tom's love life has been a part of the media circus for a very large portion of his career. His first marriage to actress 
actress Mimi Rogers only lasted three years before they split and Tom moved on to Nicole Kidman. Nicole and Tom got married in 1990 and they were actually together for quite some time, spending 11 years together before ultimately calling it quits in 2001. But of course his most memorable and public relationship was with Katie Holmes. Now thanks to Tom being an absolute menace, his divorces always seemed to go public, with him popping up in the media one way or another. Nicole did not appreciate having her name dragged through the mud and hated having to answer questions from journalists, claiming that Tom was actually enjoying the publicity while she was just suffering silently. Number 2. The director noticed no tension. The Oscar winning screenwriter of the 1999 drama Eyes Wide Shut spoke to several news outlets and claimed that the leading man Tom Cruise was an egocentric control freak while casting extreme doubt on the passion between the actor and his then wife Nicole Kidman. According to Frederick Raphael, who also functioned as a script supervisor on set, he claimed that the shoot was extremely difficult for the crew. Whatever Tom wanted needed to be done, as according to Tom, he was paying everyone so if he says jump you say how high. He also accused Tom of being particularly mean to Nicole Kidman off camera, claiming that he would often judge her performances silently to the side in between takes. That is just the tip of the accusation iceberg though. Nicole has actually been fairly shy when it comes to speaking about this project, but we already talked about that. It turns out it may be because the on set drama was just too much for her to handle. Tom had apparently hired a team of personal assistants who were always at his side every second of every day. At his beck and call 24 7, the assistant always just looked exhausted and in need of a Red Bull. But his treatment of Kidman was very revealing. Tom was secretly an angry, controlling little man who couldn't even enjoy the fact that he was working with his wife. Or you know that his wife was Nicole Kidman. And at number one, her jaw literally dropped. Nicole's description of her first meeting with Tom is something like a fairy tale. In 1989, Nicole Kidman was an up and coming 22 year old who just scored her big break with the thriller Dead Calm. Meanwhile, Tom Cruise was a 27 year old seasoned A-lister hot off of the success of Oliver Stone's anti-war film Born on the 4th of July. Cruz saw Kidman in her breakthrough role and was intent on meeting her. Per Vanity Fair, the Aussie actor was in the midst of a press junket in Tokyo when she got a call from the superstar's team. She thought, wow, this is America. Tom Cruise wants to meet me, whoa. She subsequently auditioned for a role alongside Cruise in Days of Thunder. Per the Los Angeles Times, Kidman never thought that she would get married, largely due to the influence of her feminist mother. But when she set eyes on Cruise during her audition, she was smitten. Tom pulled up in a Porsche in true Tom Cruise fashion, and when he got out of the car, Nicole recounts her jaw just dropping down. But there was a problem. Cruise was still married to his first wife and fellow actor Mimi Rogers. The couple were divorced the following year and thus began a Hollywood romance for the ages. However, Nicole's not shy when it comes to her thoughts on that first split. Sure, she was the one who he chose, but Tom divorced a woman to be with her and he was also seeing her while he was still married, which is not a great look for Tom. Nicole has been torn about her feelings on being the other woman, but she has gone on record claiming that the situation left her feeling anxious 24 7. It wasn't until after a full year that she was comfortable with Tom, but he was still being a jerky turkey, so that victory was very short lived. Alright, number 10, The Lobbyist. It's no secret that Tom Cruise thought his latest movie, you know, maybe wasn't going to be as successful as he wanted it to be. Now, we're not exactly sure what his box office goals were, you know, numbers wise, but we're getting pretty niche here with the seventh movie in a franchise. First came out in 1996. Listen, Tom, you are not Star Wars. We can't keep doing this. He definitely didn't stray away because Cruz lobbied top Hollywood executives over a phone call saying he really wanted to promote his film despite all the strikes going on with actors, writers, and stunt doubles. And I think there might be some greater issues at hand here. I haven't really been seeing much promo for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 anyway, so maybe things will be different in 2024 when Part 2 comes out. And yes, it will be the 8th Mission Impossible. And yes, it's said to be the last one. But I have a feeling. Mr. Cruz won't be able to let go of the franchise that just, you know, keeps him living in luxury. Up at number nine is Short Tempered. Now, remember that shaky video footage of Tom Cruise that leaked? You know, he was losing it on set. It was the peak of the pandemic, and We Are the Gold Standard was born. In a rant of fury, Cruise noticed some of the crew were not following the rules. They were standing a little too close together. So instead of a normal conversation, he began shouting and swearing at a group of people in the video. You can kind of 
hear him say, if I see you do it again, you're effing done. And the rest of his sentences plagued with many more f-bombs. And you know, he just kind of sounded like he was disciplining a bunch of high schoolers and not adults. He continued with, we are the gold standard. Like, what does that even mean? Because those working conditions did not look gold standard at all. All right, at number eight, we have talk show antics. Ah, yes, the moment that will follow Tom Cruise to the grave. He probably regrets it, but it certainly made the world question the sanity of the famous actor. It was 2005, and Cruise had just gotten engaged to now ex-wife Katie Holmes, a fellow actor, and it's great to talk about loved ones, you know, on shows to whoever, but it was Cruise's physical behavior that would lead to Oprah calling him her worst guest ever. Now, back then, Cruise, he still had female fans because because his antics, you know, that was just starting to come to the surface. The strangest thing about this interview though, that made history, was just how much contact there was, you know, physically between Oprah and Cruz. I mean, it looked like they could have been a couple. Cruz had been constantly, you know, reaching over to touch or wrestle the host, and I don't know. He then began jumping up and down on the couch and just acting very erratic, something you know, we'd never seen him do before. Overall, it was an odd display that was, you know, a whirlwind act, because we know, of course, Tom and Katie were never meant to be uh, when they separated after seven years together. Number seven, the micromanaging lover. Tom Cruise was said to be a much more controlling romantic partner than we thought, but it really explains why Katie Holmes felt like she had to save her daughter Suri from him. But the story goes that Cruise was very controlling of his girlfriends and wives, and it was the very thing that would make them try and, you know, leave the relationship. When he was with Katie, he controlled when she could see her family and exactly what she was doing pretty much at all times. He was said to monitor her around the clock and she wasn't really the first. Now his other ex-wife Nicole, he did leave her but um, Nicole Kidman had suffered you know a similar fate. She wasn't allowed to wear high heels when she was with him on the red carpet and whatnot because he didn't like that Kidman was taller than him. She expressed her joy of being able to you know wear what she wanted after the divorce and of course looked thrilled in the photos of her coming out of finalizing the divorce. Next is number six, the invisible parent. Tom Cruise is nowhere near being as involved with his kids kids as their mothers, which, you know, some might say is expected of a father, but the reason he hasn't seen his daughter Suri in more than a decade is pretty terrifying. Now, if you know anything about the religious cult Cruz is involved in, well, you might know about all the terrible things they've experienced, such as a high number of people taking their own lives and the massive mistreatment of both men and women, and especially women. And I'm sure Suri's mother, Katie Holmes, caught on to this, you know, a little too late, but just in time to create a new normal life for her daughter. Oh, and I also had no idea Tom had actually adopted a son and daughter with Nicole Kidman because he never talks about them. Interesting. And moving along to number five, Rice divorced. Yes, the courageous actor has tied the knot with three separate women and has been in casual dating scenes since his most recent divorce, which was to Miss Holmes. His first wife, Mimi Rogers, was actually the one that got him into the religion that he practices today and has landed him in some hot water. Now, there's of course nothing wrong with getting divorced. But if you never learn your lesson and keep ruining people's lives with your rigid beliefs, well, that's another story. While he was married to Rogers in 1990, he explained one day, suddenly, that he wanted to become a celibate monk. He, of course, never ended up doing this, but hey, it was a pretty good excuse to make your wife want to leave you. Let's move on to number four, no female fans. So back in the day when he starred in the original Top Gun and, you know, a few years later, War of the World, Cruz still had many fans who were women and just, you know, adored him. But when he started going against famous women who, you know, they also adored, well, things got a little messy. For one, Cruz came for actress and model Brooke Shields for using antidepressants. He said it was irresponsible, which is quite the opposite of the truth. And in an interview, he claimed to know the history of psychology to back up his point. And, you know, he then later had to apologize for his hurtful words because he realized, you know, people were offended. He also acted rude and arrogant towards the women sailors that helped with the production of Top Gun Maverick. He then forced top ranking army officers to, you know, come out and say that these women simply misinterpreted instructions. Yeah. 
for sure. Up next is number three, the Paramount Brawl. In 2006, Paramount the Studios, responsible for Cruise's Mission Impossible movies, had announced they would be fully cutting ties with the actor based on his behavior outside of the movie set. They said he was basically taking his and the company's positive reputation away by acting crazy on Oprah and expressing some pretty extreme views. So Paramount came out with a statement saying, quote, his recent conduct has not been acceptable to Paramount. He had never behaved like this before. He really went over the top. Well, the truth was he was losing them lots of money and his popularity rating went down by 40% just from 2005 to 2006 alone. Now, would you have sided with Cruz or Paramount? And at number two, we have too much power. You've heard of some of the highest paid actors in recent years and Cruz has been one of them, but many have been raising the suspicion that the actor is being overpaid and given too much power in certain circumstances. And yes, Cruz has gotten away with a lot of crazy things. In 2022, Cruz was making more than Will Smith, Leonardo DiCaprio, Dwayne Johnson, and all of his fellow male Hollywood megastars. But many began to question the need for the $100 million in one year and an estimated $1 billion in revenue over his entire career. Now, unfortunately, he's actually put a lot of this money into the infamous church he's a part of, $25 million to be exact, and he's not as keen on giving to the less fortunate, with charitable donations tallying up to about $5,000 per donation. And at number one is converting the Beckhams. Tom Cruise once attempted to convert the Beckham family parents, David and Victoria, to his high profit and controversial religion. Victoria and David Beckham are royals in the sports and fashion industries, but they were almost religious moguls in the world of the ultra rich when Cruise made an attempt to lure them to the dark side. In 2007, it was common to see the famous couple out and about with Tom Cruise. Apparently, Cruise wanted David in the club so bad, he had a soccer field built on the premises of headquarters to woo Beckham into you know, joining him, but he still denied the offer. Yikes. At number 10, we have Justin Bieber. Tom Cruise's train of haters doesn't just end with A-list Hollywood actors and actresses. Apparently, Justin Bieber is one of them as well, or is he? Justin and Tom's history doesn't go that far back as their interaction or lack thereof was so random. Literally, no one saw it coming. A few years ago, Justin tweeted out to his fans about wanting to fight Tom. Fans were understandably confused because where was this coming from? One fan asked, why Tom Cruise of all people? And another said, did I miss something? Both very valid points as there had been no exchange between the two that would explain why Justin would want to fight Tom. A year later, the singer explained the intention behind his tweet and it's anticlimactic as it comes. In an interview, he said, I don't know, I was just being stupid to be honest. So no, he doesn't actually want to fight Tom and there doesn't seem to be any real bad blood between them. He also admitted that it was just a random tweet which he claims to do often. He had seen one of Tom's interviews at the time. It honestly could have been any celebrity, but that day it just happened to be Tom. At number 9, we have Kate Middleton and Prince William. Tom was at the premiere for the sequel, Top Gun Maverick. This was a royal charity premiere event, so Prince William and Kate were attending the premiere as well. Sounds random if you ask me, but I don't know how these things work, so what do I know? Once the royal couple made it to the carpet, they were greeted by Tom as well as some other staff crew. But Tom took it upon himself to escort them personally. I don't know if it was to suck up to them both for the press or he valued them that much, but it could easily be both. It's not every day a member of the royal family would partake in such an event, never mind two. Videos at the premiere showed him offer his hand to Kate and viewers praised Tom for being a gentleman. But others believe that Kate and Prince William were actually uncomfortable with it. One fan pointed out that Kate had held her clutch in her other hand to avoid taking Tom's hand again. One other person commented how she apparently looked mortified and that the royals aren't to be touched even by a wildly successful actor like Tom himself. 
They also claimed how Kate is a conservative woman, so holding hands with just about anyone is already a no-no. But she had done it in the spur of the moment as to not create a scene. At number 8, we have Trey Parker and Matt Stone. When it comes to South Park and its jokes, it usually treads against dark humor waters, as many adult comedy shows are. If you're a big name, chances are they've probably joked about you at least once. And Tom Cruise was not an exception, whom the writers later found themselves in a potential legal battle with. Back in 2005, there were talks of the actor suing Trey Parker and Matt Stone for defamation after they insinuated something about him on their show. The joke in question was Tom's character inside a closet with an animated version of his ex, Nicole Kidman, urging him to come out of said closet. The writers were implying his sexuality, which he didn't like. Now for a case like defamation, you'd think that they were out to literally defame his name and character. It became such an issue, the episode that came after had a disclaimer that read, All characters and events on this show, even those based on real persons, are entirely fictional. It remains unclear if Tom ended up going through with this case or not, but at the time, rumors regarding his sexuality was talked about a lot in Hollywood, and it wasn't the first time someone was warned of being sued by the actor for these claims. At number 7, we have Kate Seberano. Lots of people thought that he and Australian singer Kate Seberano were close buddies when it was revealed she is also a member of the Scientology Church. And if you didn't know, Tom Cruise is known for two things being an actor, and being an active member of Scientology. So everyone thought the two were at least in similar social circles until the singer shut them down. They are in fact not friends as she further described the rumor that it's like assuming every Catholic person was friends with the Pope. And that's actually a valid point too. Scientology has quite the following, but that doesn't mean everyone knows each other. That's literally impossible. In 2009, when Tom was still with Kate, they were seen going to Australia, which is when the belief started going around. When asked if she met up with the stars, she said no and that she doesn't even know them. She rarely ever mentions her Scientology beliefs and doesn't like how often she's associated with Tom just because of it. She also decided that it isn't even worth her time or energy to keep denying them and allows people to decide whatever they want to believe despite her telling the truth. When asked about it, she said, you know how it goes in the end, you go whatever. At number 6, we have Kirstie Alley. It was believed that there was some bad blood between the two or that it was one-sided beef that Tom had with the actress. When it was first reported that Kirstie passed away last year, people thought that Tom would at least acknowledge it to the public as many others did. But he didn't. Rumors that there was drama between the two started after Leah Remini's memoir briefly mentioned how Tom didn't like Kirsty, and the way he dealt with the news of her passing only seemed to solidify it. In the memoir, she also wrote how Kirsty was one of the few that wasn't even invited to Tom and Katie Holmes' wedding in 2006. Nothing was confirmed, but it was definitely clear that Kirsty was at least a loyal person and fellow member of the Scientology Church alongside Tom. When Tom talks of Tom and the church auditioning women to become his wife came out, she defended Tom. When asked about it, she said, I think whenever you have articles written that there are third and fourth parties opinions, it's like the game gossip and you don't get the truth. I think that a magazine of that caliber should have interviewed him and then they would get the truth. Next on the list, we have Nazanin Bonyandi. Before Tom married Kate, he was married to actress Nazanin. Their marriage was met with tons of criticism due to the unorthodox ways of going through with it. It was reported that he needed someone who shared the same religious beliefs as him as his previous relationships with members outside of Scientology didn't work out. Apparently, Nazanin had been accepted into one of their institution's buildings meant for celebrities where she met one of the Scientologist higher ups. He told her she was meant to complete a mission that would help her meet lots of other Scientologists like herself. Apparently, she was dating and was engaged to another man at the time, which they coerced her into breaking up with him, along with telling her to get rid of her red hair and her short-term braces. This confrontation also came with an agreement that said if she messed up in any way, she would be shunned by the church and her own mother. It was this contract where she allegedly agreed to marry Tom. Lots of her rights and personal freedoms were no longer hers as she basically signed her life away. These reports were never officially confirmed as many are still speculation, but she did end up leaving the church altogether when she and Tom divorced in 1990. 
Next on the list at number four, we have David Miscavige. These two were friends, and this is said with a huge question mark because their friendship was weird. One former member of Scientology who worked closely with David said that their friendship was the most intense, expensive romance in history. As a world famous Hollywood actor and as the leader of Scientology, this makes sense considering their huge roles in society. It was reported that Tom's fame in the industry was constantly a liability, especially when the news broke out that he and Katie were getting divorced. He allegedly was not happy with this new wave of negative attention the church was receiving as a result. Even though Scientology has always had a bad rep, if I'm not mistaken, he was convinced that their divorce brought upon lies and misconception about their beliefs. Supposedly, one former Scientologist used Tom's divorce as their way to further smear the church with lies so they could promote themselves. And then there were rumors that Tom himself would be leaving Scientology as well. But this was back in 2012. Seeing as he's still an active participant in his church, I don't think he'll be leaving anytime soon. At number three, we have Penelope Cruz. The two actors met on set of the movie Vanilla Sky where they both starred in it. Tom was still married to Nicole Kidman at the time and the timeline transitioning between relationships was questionable. When he and Nicole had their divorce finalized in August 2001 was the same month Tom and Penelope went public as a couple for the first time. Despite rumors she involved herself with a married man, she shut them down. She said, I've never fallen in love with someone I'm working with. It's always been afterwards. If something becomes friendship, then maybe months later it becomes something else, but you can never know. And the two seemed very happy together. They were both successful and undeniably attractive, so what could go wrong? They ended up breaking up three years later, and it was believed that his Scientologist views were a big part of it. One source claimed that Tom was looking to propose, but Penelope felt that the Church of Scientology was the third wheel in their relationship. Penelope doesn't have anything against the church, but it just wasn't her thing. She admired Tom's dedication to it, but it wasn't her cup of tea and wasn't something she wanted to give her life up for. At number two, we have Mimi Rogers. Now before Katie Holmes and Penelope Cruz and Nicole Kidman, there was Mimi Rogers. The two met and started dating in 1985, but they both can't seem to agree on how they met. Tom said they met at a dinner party, while Mimi claimed they were set up by friends. Their marriage happened just as fast as they were wed in a super secret and private wedding ceremony in 1987. The fact that they both couldn't agree how they met, it makes sense then that they also couldn't agree on how or why they decided to separate in 1990. This time, it was ideas between them two and rumors brought forth by fans and the media. Some included Mimi being jealous of Tom's success in Hollywood as she is also an actress herself, their six year age gap that took a toll on their marriage, and even the fact that she hated being constantly referred to as Tom's wife. Their public statement announcing the divorce didn't make anything clearer. That was until Mimi said in an interview that Tom confessed that he wanted to become a monk and that their marriage wouldn't have been able to withstand his spiritual needs. And finally at number one, we have Suri Cruz. In case you didn't know, because I for sure didn't, Tom has three children in total. His first two kids were with Nicole Kidman and Suri is his youngest and latest daughter with Katie Holmes. When he and Katie got divorced, people questioned what would become of their parenting situation. Would they have joint custody? Would Suri go stay with her mom? Allegedly, Tom was not granted any custody and it was all appointed to Katie. While Tom's relationship with his two elder kids remains stable as they're also members of Scientology, people believe that the same can't be said for his relationship with Suri. One source claimed that they were estranged. The last time Tom was seen in public with Suri was in 2012 and they were spending a day together in Disneyland. 2012 was also the year he and Katie got divorced, so speculators claim that that was one of the last times Times he got to see her. Another source claimed their estrangement was only inevitable as Katie left him to protect their daughter from Scientology. Now imagine having such a bad reputation, we can list down at least 20 notable individuals in the industry that probably don't like you. The range this man has, and I'm 
not just talking about his acting career. Number 10, Scientology rants. Apart from his acting chops, Cruz is probably best known for his passionate advocacy of the Church of Scientology. In the past, Cruz has claimed that the religion was a key factor in helping him overcome his dyslexia and holds a fairly active role in the controversial church. For those who don't know, Scientology is a set of beliefs invented by a writer named L. Ron Hubbard. I spent half of my day trying to figure out what specifically those beliefs are, but hey, it turns out the information about these guys is just as cryptic as the religion itself. Tom was first introduced to Scientology by his first wife, Mimi Rogers, whose father was a prominent member of the movement and has stuck with it ever since. While nobody on this planet deserves to be hated because of their beliefs, Tom doesn't help this situation as it's been reported on numerous occasions that he seizes any opportunity he finds to corner you and break down his religion for a long time. Famous comedian Seth Rogen wrote in his biography, Yearbook, about an experience that he had with Tom after being invited to his home in 2006. When the topic of Scientology was mentioned, Tom went on a tangent about how he was being perceived in the media and explained to Rogan in great detail the reasons that he should be a Scientologist. He asked Rogan to give him 20 minutes to really like sink into the history of the church, but thankfully director Judd Apatow was sitting with them at the time and he was like, nah, we're good. Tom was nuts. He even blamed the pharmaceutical companies for making him look bad, saying that they had something to do with the negative press. They've got better things to do, like, I don't know, cure chicken pox and stuff. Number nine, angry little man. While Tom may be an action movie star and was once a young Hollywood heartthrob, he's had a massive temper since day one. According to both former assistants as well as several co-stars from Tom's past, Cruz is a regular toddler and is known to throw tantrums being set off by the smallest things. His former manager Eileen Berlin presented Tom with a gift on his 19th birthday. She gave him an album of teen magazine articles written about him and apparently that set him off. He told his manager that he considered himself an adult, not a teen idol, and he decided to throw the book right in her face. Another example of Tom's aggression was on display during the filming of his recent Top Gun sequel, Maverick. During this time, Tom and the rest of the film crew were tasked to shoot on an actual aircraft carrier still being used by the US military. One of the crewmates of that ship posted on Twitter calling out the audacity of Tom's behavior. He tweeted that Tom Cruise was really on our ship telling people not to talk or look at him. After a few choice words, the crewmate made it very clear clear that Tom was not welcome aboard their vessel. These are just two examples though. Tom has blown up on film crews several times in the past, to the point where his Mission Impossible 2 co-star was constantly scared of Tom on set and what he may freak out about next. Number 8, he's chaotic. Now, it's one thing to be asking people to join your church all the time, whatever, no biggie. But Tom's behavior as a member of society has been rough to say the least. Following the announcement that he was engaged to Katie Holmes in the early 2000s, Tom appeared on an episode of the Oprah Winfrey show that has gone down as one of the most chaotic TV interviews of all time. From the moment he walks on stage, he has such a strange energy. He's like oddly excited, like he just got told the best news in his entire life. He throws his arms up in the air, he rubs Oprah's shoulders like she's a lamp and he's trying to summon a genie. He revealed to the audience that the excitement was from his engagement to fellow actor Katie Holmes. Awesome man, but can you like stop trying to break Oprah please? Seriously, Tom jumped on her couch, she grabbed her hands over and over again. She couldn't even get to the questions that she had for him because he was just so chaotic. Eventually Oprah was like, eh whatever, just bring her out and the cameras followed Tom as he ran around the studio trying to find her. It looked like a scene from Paranormal Activity. Tom's energy continued to stay at that level of chaos throughout his entire marriage to Katie. Since the divorce though, he's just nuts. Number 7. Political Moves Due to his beliefs in Scientology, Cruz intensified his dedication to share his beliefs by becoming an international lobbyist with the goal of helping his church be recognized as an official religion. Tom tried to share his message in multiple countries and was denied by all of them. According to the Irish Examiner, leaders in Paris came to an agreement in 2005 not to make Cruz an honorary citizen because of his affiliation with the church. If that's not bad enough, Cruz brought his issues to the German government. A chief spokesperson for the Protestant church shared that they were against Cruz and his beliefs comparing him to Joseph Goebbels, a German propagandist. Making a move from TV to politics has historically been a bad one, with the only successful stories really being Arnold Schwarzenegger and Donald Trump. And one of those guys went back to the movies and the other one's in jail now, so I, I don't know, you be the judge. Number 6. Multiple Messy Divorces Tom's 
Love Life has been a part of the media circus for a large portion of his career. His first marriage to actress Mimi Rogers only lasted three years before they split and Tom moved on to Nicole Kidman. Kidman and Cruz got married in 1990 and they were actually together for quite some time. They were together for like 11 years before ultimately calling it quits in 2001. But of course his most memorable and public relationship was with his now ex Katie Holmes. As previously mentioned on this list, the two were engaged in 2005 and at the time Tom was stoked. They tied the knot and stayed together for only 7 years. With the ending of each marriage comes a litany of negative press. Tom got divorced 3 times which means that 3 times Tom has had to publicly air his dirty laundry for us all to see and as many of us know dirty laundry belongs in a pile on your floor. Hide it. Hide it away. Number 5. Control freak. Tom is no stranger to an onset freak out or two, but he's also made a name for himself as a bit of a control freak. Both on set and in his personal relationships, Tom feels a need to be in charge of every little thing at any given time. An insider told Radar Online that Tom was not good at keeping a relationship, as many women found him to be very intense. To him, any partner is an extension of himself and his brand. So he's not only intense, but he's also a micromanager as well. So much so that at times, Cruz has even been known to control what his partners are allowed to wear when they're in public together. This made many love interests feel like members of his staff, and rightfully so. Tom has also been a control freak on set, with the most recent example being an incident that occurred on his last Mission Impossible movie. An audio clip was released of Cruz berating several crew members with intense anger. The crew in question were accused of not following safety protocols that were in place at that time. In his rant, Tom is heard swearing and screaming about the rules, and how if he wants something to happen, it will happen. The crew are essentially his minions, who must do their master's bidding. The rant went viral, but Cruz defended the rant rather than apologizing for his words, claiming that he said what he said, and the stakes were high at the time, so I don't know, deal with it. While this may have been happening at a time when Hollywood was shut down and many productions were on hold, that's no excuse to harass the people trying to make you look good. Number 4. Mansplainer Now, Telling women what they can and can't wear is one way to ensure you won't be popular among a female demographic. but Telling them how to give birth? Now that's a whole other level of messed up. While many people in power have been trying to tell women what to do with their bodies for ever, Cruz was forced to address rumors that he made his third wife Katie give birth in secret and in complete silence, a practice Scientologists believe prevents any permanent psychic scars caused by negative vibes at birth. Cruz confirmed that this was true, but made the argument that the process was not as strict as many people believed it to be. He even had a special pacifier made specifically for Katie to keep her as quiet as possible during the birth. This wasn't the only time Cruz chimed in on his beliefs, as in 2005 he openly criticized Endless Love co-star Brooke Shields for taking medication to help her cope with postpartum depression. Well, Shields responded by telling Tom that he should stick to saving the world from aliens and let women who are experiencing postpartum decide what treatment options are best for them. Eat it, Tom! Number 3. Converter Devoting one's life to a faith created by a science fiction writer is all well and good, but trying to talk your fellow celebs into doing the same thing? Hey, hey, that, that's annoying. I'm sure someone out there is still trying to get signatures for their Church of Lovecraft petition, but we don't have to get into that. Former high-ranking Scientologist Gary Moorhead, great last name by the way, told the Daily Mail that Cruz had an unhealthy obsession with soccer superstar David Beckham and viewed him as the ideal candidate for conversion. Sadly for Tom, that never actually happened, but it wasn't for lack of trying though. According to Gary, in an attempt to lure Beckham into Scientology headquarters, Cruz ordered Sea Org, which is the short form for Scientology organization members, to create a full size soccer stadium. That's right, he built a stadium like the old nerdy guy in bench warmers. Hey, hey, guess what? Beckham didn't show up. After he said he'd come check the place out, himself and his wife decided to ditch the event and chose to ghost protocol his butt. Number two, bad dad. Cruz has three children, Isabella and Connor, who were adopted during his marriage to Nicole Kidman, and Suri, who he fathered with Katie Holmes before they split up. The first sign of Cruz being a bad dad came in 2015 when he missed his eldest daughter's wedding, despite her being heavily involved in the church, going so far as to have a Scientology themed wedding. While Bella does keep in contact with her father, the same cannot be said for Tom's other kids. According to a June 2016 report from In Touch, Cruz hasn't had contact with Suri in years. According to insiders, this is simply due to his wanting to distance himself from his ex Katie and unfortunately by association, his daughter. Tom's heavy involvement in the Scientology community has caused him to neglect anyone who is either against or disagrees with his ideas. While being dedicated to one's faith is nothing to make fun of, this man deserves a bad dad mug as soon as possible. And number 1. 
People love to hate the guy. Let's face it, when a celebrity messes up or does something crazy, everyone jumps on the media bandwagon. We as a society famously love to watch the elites crumble, as it's a fun time for all of us normies. Unfortunately for Tom, that bandwagon will never be empty, and Tom himself continues to give us cause for concern. It's 2023, and this man is still regularly freaking out on set, controlling the women in his relationship, and being a chaotic bad everywhere he goes. Despite his questionable beliefs and erratic outbursts, Cruz still remains in high demand. To this day, he is still one of Hollywood's leading men despite the public reputation and gossip that has followed him through his entire career. It only makes sense that a man who can get away with so much is seen as a pariah by his fellow celebrities and fans. He continues to regularly release blockbusters, and while some have failed to recoup their huge budgets, for instance, Tom is single-handedly responsible for ruining the Warner Brothers monsterverse. Not only did he mess with the script for the production of The Mummy, he also changed shooting locations, themes, and entire characters, simply because he was the producer and he could do it. Hey man, next time just give Tom some crayons and a pad and let him loose, alright? Put him in the corner, just ignore him. Starting off our list today in the number 10 spot, we have an A-top life. When it comes to Tom Cruise's past, it seems like it wasn't as easy as he would like us all to believe, especially when he was younger. While most 13 year olds would find it hard to cope with all the factors that come with school, especially when it comes to fitting in, considering Tom had to attend 13 different schools when growing up, hints that he didn't really fit in with being being the new kid on the block so many times and it definitely left a mark on his character. During an interview with Robert Ebert, Tom would even confess that in his early life, it lacked stability as he had to live in various cities growing up. Tom would then explain it wouldn't be until 6th grade that he found his resilience, determination and competitive character and it manifested themselves after he turned his talents to floor hockey and other athletic teams. By high school, he even became a football linebacker in Hollywood, but after he was caught drinking before a game, his career in football would end. Later on in an interview, Cruz would even expose his family's financial status and how it led him to be bullied when he was younger, when he told Robert that he was mocked by other kids because of his accent, shoes, and pretty much everything about himself. And since the fourth grade, he turned to acting to help him combat with his struggles with bullying. Number 9. His Height For years, Tom Cruise has been using height illusions to trick the public into thinking that he's much taller than he actually is. With the actor standing at 5 foot 7, when he was seen looking a little taller when alongside Kate Middleton on the red carpet in 2022, with the two nearly eye to eye on the red carpet, when you consider the fact that the Princess of Wales is 5 foot 9 and was wearing 3 inch stiletto heels, it would have boosted her height to at least 6 feet, which is quite a height difference for the actor and yet with his tricks he was able to look taller than Kate. So at this point you're probably wondering how did he do it? And how he looks nearly 4 to 5 inches taller than his scene partners on set or other celebrities in film or in photos. Well, before you start questioning whether wizards are real, well relax, they aren't and he's simply just using styling tricks for his grand height illusion by wearing the right clothes and shoes. He's also carefully coordinated his poses with the help of stairs and boxes and he's tricked the public into thinking that he's much taller than he actually is. But it also helps that he also wears heeled shoes when he's on the red carpet. Alright teacups, yeah I heard you, apparently you guys don't like being called peaches so I'm switching things up a bit. So if you like this video so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, you know, subscribe to the channel so you never have to miss out on what we might just cover next. Number 8. Recruiting While Tom Cruise has been known to credit much of his success in Hollywood to his Scientology religion, he has stood on this idea that just because he's talking about his religion doesn't mean he's actually trying to recruit other celebrities or people to join it. However, Tom has been a vocal advocate for his controversial religion for quite some time now, and some celebrities like Seth Rogen have even admitted that Tom once tried to convert him to the cause. Seth even once recalled in an interview with Howard Stern that during a meeting with Cruz, Tom went on to say, if you let me just tell what it's really about, if you let me just give me like 20 minutes to really tell you what it was about, you would say, no effing way. The interview then managed to steer towards a conversation towards movies as everyone on the set was just feeling a little bit uncomfortable with what was being said about the conversion story. And that would all soon be forgotten. Number 7. Struggles For the longest time, Tom Cruise tried to keep his personal struggles hidden, but after he finally closed a door on his academic life in 1980, he would finally open up about his academic struggles when he told People magazine, When I was about 7 years old, I was labeled dyslexic. I tried to call 
concentrate on what I was reading and I'd get to the end of the page and have very little memory of anything I read. I would go back, it'd be blank, I'd feel anxious, nervous, bored, frustrated, and dumb. I would get angry. This is why throughout school and well into his career, Tom did everything he could to harbor his struggles as a secret. As an inspiring actor, Tom's frustration would lead for his condition to reach a boiling point, as reading scripts and memorizing lines should have been like bread and butter for the actor when it came to his craft, but he found his dyslexia from mastering what he wanted to accomplish. During cold reads, Tom would then talk to the director about his character, and he would try to wing it, but he could only carry on flying by the seat of his pants for so long, because in his own words, the trap door was going to open, and that would be it. But then he tried to claim in 1986 that his remedy to his dyslexia was cured because of Scientology and how they taught him to read. Number six, Katie Holmes. While Tom tried to claim that he was totally blindsided when it came to his split with Katie Holmes, apparently that just wasn't the case, as he even pleaded with the actress to stay with him for a surprise party that he was throwing himself. With the couple fighting over her plan to leave, Katie found herself in a situation that made her plan a daring escape so she could get her daughter away from Tom and his crazy religious views, as she didn't want to see her Six year old at the time attending a Scientology run school. Katie was also so scared that she even had her cell phone switched out and she even went off the grid to the point not even her closest friends and family could get a hold of her. While Tom was aware Katie was looking into getting a new apartment, he just didn't know why she was doing it as he didn't actually think she was going to leave him and when she did he thought it was just so she could feel safe from the public but what he didn't know was that she was actually leaving him so she could divorce him and know that her daughter could be safe from his grasp. Later it would be revealed that the couple had a pretty toxic relationship and after their divorce, he even managed to get a judge to agree that Katie couldn't publicly date anybody for five years so it wouldn't embarrass him. Like let's talk about some small D energy. Number five, Smith family ties. With Will Smith pretty much lying low these days, after his career took a serious hit since his infamous incident at the 94th Academy Awards and with the actor's last movie being The Emancipation, it wasn't really received well by the audience. And he has now turned to his old time buddy Tom Cruise to help assist him in lifting his career trajectory. But remember how they both tried to claim at one point they actually weren't that close so they could hide the fact that Jada's affiliation with the church wasn't actually real? Well, Tom is doing his best to stay clear of the Smith family to the point apparently Will has been trying to call him several times a day, but there's been no communication between the two. Considering at one point Will and Tom actually used to be best friends, it seems like Tom is trying to show that the situation has changed now. And while Tom's trying to maintain that he's keeping a safe distance from his former friend in public, we all know that something is in the works behind closed doors, and we should expect to see these two on the screen together sometime soon, as let's not forget, Scientology tends to help out their members that are struggling. So we should see the Smith's family affiliation be exposed by the church and Tom very soon. Number four, past relationships. For some odd reason, it seems like every time Tom Cruise has gone on to split from one of his girlfriends or wives. He seems to split from them around the time they turned 33 years old, which is honestly pretty strange. And it makes you wonder why all his ex-wives, such as Katie Holmes, Nicole Kidman, and Mimi Rogers' relationships with Tom came to an end when they were all 33 years old. Like, is this just one bizarre coincidence or just an intriguing conspiracy? And while he's gone on to claim Scientology hasn't actually been behind any of his divorces, it actually makes you you question if the actor's lying about that fact, as it isn't exactly a rabbit hole for any sane person that they would want to disappear into. However, it hasn't really stopped people from speculating that the number 33 also has a deep significance in Scientology. Since the age of each of Tom's ex-wives at the time of divorce can't be ignored, if you look at where the first church of Scientology was founded, it actually lies on a circle of latitude that lies 33 degrees from the Earth's equator, and it's been called the 33rd parallel. But I'll let you decide if this is just a coincidence, but seriously, just connect the dots. Something just doesn't seem right. Number three, the Brad Pitt feud. When it comes to Tom's feud with Brad Pitt, it may seem like the two just don't like each other. But at the end of the day, Tom is just salty over the fact that one of the best actors in the world finds him pretty annoying to work with. And it's gotten to the point that even when Tom was snubbed for a Golden Globes nomination, he would even go on to blame Brad Pitt for sabotaging his chances. Tom was apparently expected to walk away with the award for best actor in 
22. But when he found out he didn't make the list, it totally blew a fuse in his gasset. As he was even in the process of fine tuning his acceptance speech, and when he found out that Brad was nominated for his role in the movie Babylon, Tom would really show that he was obsessed with beating Brad out. It seems like the feud is really based on Tom's ego, as Brad can't stand that Tom wants everything to be about him, and Tom's really just upset that nothing can really be about him when Brad's still in the picture. Number two, fake manic episodes. So back in 2005, we all watched Tom Cruise have his way over the top manic episode when he shocked everyone during an interview with Oprah. While the actor was talking to Oprah about his new relationship with Katie Holmes, whom he would eventually marry a year later, Tom made his excitement clear throughout the interview by getting up and doing victory poses. At one point, he even turned into a complete maniac and jumped on the couch in the middle of the conversation right next to Oprah. While the moment seemed slightly over the top at the time, it's clear Tom knew what he was doing and the audience loved the move. After viewers inspected the clip later on, they would all come to know that Tom was just faking this manic episode so he could draw more eyes to his relationship with Katie. And his perception by the public would be changed forever. And coming in number one today, we have Not Scared. So we all know Tom has done some pretty insane stunts while on some pretty big movie sets. And while actors usually aren't required to do their own sets, it seems like Tom just has a thing for doing some of the world's most craziest stunts. And while he's tried to say that it doesn't scare him. Back in 2015, he would admit while he does like doing his own stunts, he did fear for his life when he had to hang off a flying plane eight times while shooting a scene for the Mission Impossible film. When the star was asked about his experience, he would say, I was actually scared. As always, I will do everything I can to entertain an audience and put as many people into your theaters. I'm an aerobatic pilot. I've always wanted to do that. I was in a harness on my side. That was kind of loose so you could see the vibration of my body against the plane. Tom would then go on to claim that he almost got injured when the plane landed despite the crew making efforts to clear the runway of birds and debris. At CinemaCon in Las Vegas, he would even tell the crowd that he definitely paid the price for doing his own stunts when he said, I got hit by just a little particle. I literally thought it broke my ribs. But seriously, who does their own stunts, especially crazy stunts like that? And at number 10, antisocial antics. Actor Jim Carrey formally revealed that Tom carries around a particular nickname in the industry. When mentioning the renowned star in his book, Memoirs and Misinformation, Jim stated that Tom was constantly being referred to as Laser Jack Lightning within Hollywood. While exposing this, Jim added, That's just us poking fun at the litigiousness of Hollywood. I know Tom. He may sock me, but hey, I'll take the beating for a piece of art. An unnamed source once claimed to life and style that Hollywood may have iced Tom out. Then there's the alleged theory that the actor has stuck with his promise of never speaking with or working alongside those who exposed him. The same source concluded, he doesn't have that many close friends and he certainly doesn't trust many people. Some say all of his supposed celebrity friendships are phony. Before we break down the rest of today's list, be sure to tap our notification bell for more top 10 celebrity content. And at number 9, hates Rob Lowe. There was a time when the filmmaking actor and podcaster dished about his heated run-in with the Mission Impossible star. Rob formally recounted the encounter with Tom while they were stationed on a set of The Outsiders. The incident occurred during a fight scene rehearsal when Rob accidentally hit Tom's nose and reportedly set him off. According to media claims, Rob stated he and Tom had to be separated to prevent them from engaging in a genuine physical fight, exclaiming, the next thing you know he's ready to kill me. Rob also mentioned how Tom lost his marbles when he discovered they'd be rooming together in New York during their final auditions for The Outsiders. In at number 8, Bossy Regulator. Tom's infamously viral unprecedented times rant was supposedly sending the right message but delivered in the worst way possible. Of course, shaming and publicly humiliating people is never okay and serves as an ineffective way to get messages across. Reports even stated compassion works best in response to compliance. However, there was nothing compassionate about the way Tom reportedly berated his Mission Impossible 7 crew about 20 20 health protocols, leaked via an audio recording. Said recording emerged capturing the actor explosively shouting at his MI7 crew over their apparent health tip, exposed by the British news outlet The Sun. While no one knew what sparked the outburst originally, The Sun stated Tom addressed two members on set who he believed broke protocols while filming on the outskirts of London. Both Variety and The New York Times cited unnamed sources surrounding the film to confirm the leak's authenticity. In the recording, Tom is overheard screaming that whoever did it again would be effing 
gone and to not ever do it again. Tom further appeared to inform the crew via the audio that Hollywood relies on films similar to theirs to keep the industry thriving. In at number 7, Lies About Lies Everyone knows, or at least thinks they know, just how deeply Tom's involvement in the whole Scientology stuff is and whatnot. But he'll be the first to debunk these practice theories, despite media evidence possibly working against him. According to Vanity Fair and frankly just about every other publisher, Tom was using his status in Scientology to find a lifelong partner. But ask Tom or anybody in his inner circle and they'll straight up tell you it's lies. Back in 2012, Tom's representative lawyer, Bert Fields, spoke to ET in response to a then new Vanity Fair article which claimed a low down Scientology project was crafted as a way to help the star find a partner, calling out the article as being long, boring and false. The then new VF piece alleged that back in 2004, before Tom's marriage to Katie Holmes, members of Scientology geared up on a top secret mission led by Shelley Miscavige, wife of Scientology leader David Miscavige, to scout out a girlfriend for Tom, involving an elaborate auditioning process. The article further detailed some rather harsh treatment Nazanin Baniadi allegedly faced after being selected to date Tom between November 2004 to January 2005. Scientology spokespeople denied all claims of the project existing, and both Tom and David declined to be interviewed by the outlet. However, the church did respond to Paul's claims, insisting he and Nazanin were part of a group founded by self-admitted liars for anti-Scientology and repeatedly sold off stories to top bidders over the years. In at number 6, Labor Work Scheme Across the last decade or so, a handful of ex-members belonging to the Church of Scientology have spoken out to blame the group for inappropriate misconduct, among several other allegations, and Tom seemingly centered right around the bad press. Back in 2013, a total of 15 Scientologists alleged how Tom took repeated advantage of members while only paying them a single dollar per hour to complete endless tasks. Reports included their leader ordered them to complete the renovation of his Beverly Hills home back in 2004 to oversee the construction of a large custom motorhome for crews within 5 months and to assist in the process of customization and construction for a reserved limousine for the actor. Former high ranker Scientologist Amy Scooby once detailed her jobs of locating workers of the church to maintain their positions of nanny, cook and maid. In at number 5, celebrities avoid him like the plague. According to reports, numerous celebrities allegedly maintain distance from the actor regularly. An unknown insider once claimed that the reason why celebrities keep Tom at arm's length is that whoever gets close to him is encouraged to convert to Scientology. Obviously, this tactic was dubbed as creepy and overall invasive. But apart from the church's recruitments, many others have been open about the tales of Tom's overgrown temper tantrums and overall questionable behavior. Due to this and probably a bit more, Tom allegedly relocated to London at one point and has remained rather private about his very public life since. A source even backed up these claims by once saying, Tom's star status is taking a hit. He's definitely at a crossroads in his life. In at number 4, Divorce Patterns Throughout his life, Tom has had 3 divorces under his belt, all of which ended in messy headlines and he said she said media games. Reports have described the insane similarities between his former spouses and the way they've all ended too. Allegedly, Tom has a bad habit of allowing history to repeat itself as there have been reported patterns shadowing the actor from every one of his splits with his ex-wives. From Mimi Rogers to Nicole Kidman and Katie Holmes, many netizens chalk their scenarios up as an odd coincidence that his marriage to them ended at the specific age of 33. However, others noted that 33 is a rather significant number for Tom's Scientology practice. Outside of that theory though, there have been other less wild suggestions for the exposed pattern, which is simply just Tom having a preference for dating women under 33 and sticking to that no matter what. In at number 3, the height debate. Tom has never been one to lie about his height specifically, but it's been detailed that Tom's height has been yet another exposed secret within the industry. A 2020 article published by The Things released a theory which may have proved Tom's height has been one great big fib. It's no shocker that fans are adamant when it comes to speculation about the acting star, and even though Tom's infamous Oprah couch moment is still talked about even today, we've clearly seen a downfall in Tom's personal feelings being announced to the world. As E! Online elaborated while Tom was cast in one shot, many were unimpressed by Tom landing the role of Jack Reacher. While the character and plotline seemed perfect for Tom as an action based film, fans of the Lee Child series just weren't happy. And while Tom didn't declare his height then, fans were clearly aware of how tall he is. Tom insisted on Lee Child's approval of him playing Jack as well. But of course, Tom was incredibly irked about fans commenting on the size of his stature. It states online that the actor is 5 feet 7 inches, and going based on that, it seems he's never lied about his height. Though he did also make regular appearances with his 5'9 ex-wife Katie for years with no issues. Not to mention his size never held him back in 
Hollywood, still worth millions and only adding even more acting credits to his resume within each month. In at number 2, Controversial Conversations Tom once seemed to compare acting to combat fighting in Afghanistan. As for a 2013 reported deposition, while entangled in his $50 million lawsuit against Bauer Media, the actor allegedly informed the court that being on location while filming took about as much energy as serving a tour of duty. The opposing team's lawyer brought up Tom's alleged absence from Surrey, which publicly equated his comparison to acting being as taxing as someone fighting in Afghanistan. After Tom was questioned if he was aware of his words, the actor reportedly responded, didn't hear Afghanistan, but that's what it feels like and certainly on this last movie, it was brutal. Naturally, the press was on Tom's tail with the effortless headliner, all while Tom's defense lawyer, Bert, attempted to clear the air about his supposedly exaggerated statements. Bert even slammed people assuming Tom's remarks were harmful too, stating, the assertions that Tom likened making a movie to being at war is a gross distortion of record. What Tom said, laughingly, was that sometimes that's what it feels like. In at number 1, Worst Father of the Year Award Finally, we have the touchy topic of Tom's fatherhood. On top of being accused of brainwashing his eldest kids, Tom also reportedly abandoned another one too. But before we break down the latter, let's discuss the former a bit more. While Nicole Kidman and Tom were still married, they adopted two children named Isabella and Connor. Once they split, it was stated via reports that Tom did his very best to convince the pair they needed to cut their mom out of their lives. Former Scientologist Sam Domingo claimed Isabella and Connor were forced into Scientology school and taken away from their mother. Sam further added how they were brainwashed by growing up, sans choices, and was most notably being used as leverage for the church. While Connor allegedly remained in their care under full-time surveillance supervision, working to become the perfect Scientologist, Isabella starred in promotional videos for the church's London branch and encouraged members to intern as auditors. Isabella also reportedly described how the training was incredible and thanked her dad for everything. Then came the reports of Tom leaving his daughter Suri behind. While Tom wanted absolutely no one to think he just upped and left his youngest daughter out to dry, this is adamantly what several stories claimed over the years. In 2012, Tom filed his Bauer Media lawsuit for the life and style and in touch articles with claims that he turned his back on his daughter. However, he was later forced to admit in his deposition the next year that he had abandoned Surrey for an extended time due to work. A source added to this by claiming Tom's connection to Scientology and its disconnection policy was involved in the process. Of course, this should all be taken with a grain of salt as a lot of tabloids will claim whatever. There's also the fact that Tom hasn't ever really seen a hit in his active working street within history still, and all the hate towards him never once stopped his money making success at the end of the day.